Hey everyone, welcome back. It is a beautiful day outside today. It's a nice breeze, it's a perfect day to be out on the water. So here's my question. If you were going out on the water and you could only bring three things with you, what would they be? Now for me, I guess I would want something that was very relaxing. I would want something that was mature. I'd want something royal. Let's see. Tired, old, queen at the movies. I'd take Steve Hayes with me. How about you? Now let's go see Steve and see what he has for us this week. Johnny! Well, hey kid. Tired old queen at the movies. Oh, Johnny! I wanted to do a comedy, so I chose one of my favorite comedies from the 1940s, Joseph L. Mankiewicz's A Letter to Three Wives, starring Gene Crane, Anne Southern, Linda Darnell, Kirk Douglas, and Thelma Ritter from 1949. Now, Joseph L. Mankiewicz had been a big producer at MGM, and he produced a lot of the movies for Katharine Hepburn. He produced Philadelphia Story, you know, Woman of the Year, big movies. And he always wanted to direct. So he started directing in the mid-40s, and he directed uh, The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, which we did on Tired Old Queen at the Movies with Gene Tierney, a movie called Dragon Wick, which we'll do down the line with Gene Tierney. And he was also very much wanted to write. He came across this story called A Letter to Five Wives. And through Daryl F. Zanuck, the head of 20th Century Fox, they got it down to three and they made this film. This movie is one of the cutest movies imaginable. It's set in a small town oh, like Rhinebeck up on the right. Hudson. It was shot along the Hudson River. And it's these three wives and they're all doing uh, social work. So they're taking this group of kids on a boat ride up the Hudson. Now, it's Jean Crane and Anne Southern and Linda Darnell. Jean Crane married the wealthiest guy in town and they were both in uniform during the war and she said everybody looked the same I looked the same he looked the same I didn't know I was marrying into society until I came back here. and she's very insecure about this out of the Navy out of uniform new home new town new friends oh, I told that blasted girl I wanted to come without soft making me look even more like a farmhand than I feel and she kind of cries at the drop of a hat Freda look at me Look at my mail-order dress that's four years old and awful even then. What am I going to do? Anne Southern is the career girl. She's been writing radio programs and making good money and bringing in most of the money for her family. She has twins, and she's married to Kirk Douglas, who was her childhood sweetheart, who's a school teacher who doesn't earn a lot of money but is really the nicest guy in town. Generous to a fault. To a fault. Linda Darnell came from the wrong side of the track, Laura May Hollingsway, and she set her sights on Paul Douglas, who is this guy who built up this chain of department stores, which were starting to spring up. That was a big thing in the late 1940s. She marries Porter, and she is a sex bomb. She is absolutely gorgeous, and they make each other miserable for some reason. No such thing. She gave him the heave-ho. He went out for a paper one night and never came back. Well, these three women are all friends, and they're a little bit bitchy with each other, a little bit catty with each other, and they go to get on this boat, and a guy arrives with a letter. He says, I've got a letter, and it's addressed to the three women, and they hand it to him, and it's from their other friend, Addie Ross, who is this woman, a single woman in town who was supposed to go with them. And in this letter, she says, Girls, I'm leaving town. And they all, they get catty right away. It's about time, I know. What kind of thing is she? Well, you know Addie. Who knows Addie? Nobody. Let me tell And then they, they keep reading this and it says, You've all, you've been my three dearest friends. And I wanted to say goodbye. And I wanted you also to know that I'm taking something of yours with me so that I'll always remember you. Because, girls, I've run off with one of your husbands. Well, if that's her idea of a joke, she's extremely she's poor taste. If I ever say. catch up with that character, I'll... So the movie then is a flashback and during the day of each one of these women's marriage and seeing how these things turned out and trying to figure out who Addie Ross has run away with. Now, they get to Bear Mountain and the kids are running around. They start getting a little catty with each other and you start realizing that perhaps their idealistic situations aren't all they were meant up to be. You're being a little too touchy about a perfectly inoffensive remark, it seems to me. Oh, let's stop this sudden bickering. We're beginning to behave like 
some movie about a woman's prison. <laughs> and so there's Boss, who's uh, Florence Bates, comes to the house. And the, the dialogue is so witty. The jokes are so great. And she's questioning about what if she listens to the radio. And she says, uh, Sadie! Florence Bates was the old bag in Rebecca that takes is after Joan Fontaine at the beginning of Rebecca. She says, uh, Sadie, do you listen to the radio? All the time. So I'm already says, In bed, I listen to the police call. But you can't understand them. They're in code. I sleep like a baby. Florence Bates turns to Linda Darnell and says, well, what Sadie doesn't realize is that even uh, though she's not paying attention, uh, she's being penetrated. <laughs> Linda Darnell goes, well, don't let Sadie hear you say that. And then she goes, and after penetration, of course, comes saturation. Not Sadie, and I've seen her when she was saturated to the eyes. You never see Addie Ross. You hear her, and it's the voice of Celeste Holm, but you never, ever see her. And it's one of the great conceits of this movie. It's also about the battle of the sexes and who really wins and is there ever really a winner and it's about how after a while things change in a marriage and love goes out and maybe it doesn't and maybe it takes something like this to spark everything up again it's refreshing it's witty as hell it's brilliantly directed Mankiewicz won the best uh, won the Oscar for best screenplay and best director and went on to direct the following year and win the same two awards the following year for doing All About Eve the guy was brilliant it's a great great evening you're gonna have a ball Gene Crane Ann Southern and Linda Darnell in Joseph L. Mankiewicz's A Letter to Three Wives Let's all go to the lobby Sadie Dugan, look at you. I know, Laura May. I got a few names I could call you too. So <laughs> to get ourselves a treat. 